Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jimbo Fisher is richer than all of us. You know, you can say the same thing about pretty much any college coach at this point, but, you know, yeah. So, what has happened? Um, Champions Classic was last night. I fell asleep pretty early. I think I fell asleep in between the rankings. Um, I did not watch Champions Classic, by the way. Um, we'll talk college basketball a little later. You know, we'll talk about that in a couple days. But, yeah, week 10. Oh, Jimbo, out of here. Gone. I know there was another coach firing as well. There's been some official hires and error and everything in between. But, you know, Jimbo Fisher, uh, yeah, his era at A&M was just not it. Uh, it, it was rough. He, he gets – at least he gets over $75 million for being a complete failure at A&M, perpetually 8-4 and four every year. I wish I could have seventy-five million for being eight and four every single year. I mean that 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 that's 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 fine and dandy. I'd love seventy-five million right now. Um, yeah. Speaking of another SEC team, you know Tennessee, they got smacked around by Missouri, Brady Cook and company, uh, top ten Missouri, by the way, and Georgia, of course, you know, is still Georgia. <laughs> I mean, Georgia is still. The champs until somebody beats them, and well, they flex their muscles against Ole Miss, and they're going to face the Alabama Crimson Tide, the Georgia Bulldogs, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. You know the story of this type of game: two powerhouses going at it, and Milrow had six touchdowns against Kentucky. Just, just absolutely phenomenal change in the way this man is playing. Like you know, man. It's crazy how early in the season this man was just, you know, he was just lost. He didn't know where he was half the time. All he could do was throw a deep ball and maybe run a little bit, but now he's poised. The offense has changed to fit his skill set, and Jalen Milrow is leading Alabama to the SEC championship against Georgia. So, um, yeah, so the SEC set. The Big 12 isn't set, though. Texas, despite surviving against TCU, they do lose Jonathan Brooks and get another Texas big lead. They almost blow it, but, you know, Texas used their defense at the very end to get what they needed to get, which was another W. Um, inside the Pac-12, anyway, you know, Bo Nix cooked the Trojan defense. There was two passes for 160 yards and two touchdowns, two long TD bombs that, you know, set the stage for this game between USC and Oregon. And Oregon is one step closer, just one step closer to facing Washington, who took down Utah in a highly contested game. Um, pretty good game, by the way, between Utah and Washington. But Utah is a little further down in the Pac-12 race, and so it's... Getting towards the end, and we'll talk about, you know, a couple teams, you know, that are kind of in the back 12 race still. Uh, once again, Penn State failed to just do anything of note on offense against a team that's relevant. And, you know, Michigan bullied Penn State on the run attack. Finally, if you were a better, you know, if you gambled, you know, You'll know that Blake Corum hasn't ran for 100 yards yet this season until this game against Penn State. And he just bullied them, you know. I don't know, but Edwards was doing his thing. Hell, J.J. McCarthy only had eight passes. Jim Harbaugh not on the sidelines, by the way. Now, you know, the Nittany Lions are out of the race for the Big Ten East. Wow. Shocking, I know, right? So it will be Michigan-Ohio State for the East. And then Florida State, they beat Miami. Hurricanes fought pretty hard, though. We'll talk a little bit more, you know, about another ACC team that has to face Miami. And then the Pac-2, they, you know, the Washington State, the Oregon State case, they win their keys to get to the party 10 for like 300 to $500 million. It's in that range. Of, I believe it was close to $500 million. Um, basically, it's about distribution, you know, the revenue and everything like that. How is that money going to be divided up? Where is that money going to go? All that different stuff as far as, you know, the money 
of, you know, these teams leaving the Pac-12 to go to other conferences and stuff like that. So that's what that's all about. Honestly, can't really say too much more about it that hasn't already been said. Just go look around about it. Um, it's really interesting, you know, with the way Oregon State, Washington State have been treated. And, you know, the slate this week, you know, isn't going to help that all that much. You know, it is indeed Cupcake Week in college football. <clears throat> you know, the term Cupcake Week being that these are, you know, perceived to be less games. We don't have lesser games here. Um, you know, you look in the new window. We'll talk about Louisville, Miami here early. Um, also, of note, Michigan, Maryland. And then, you know, in the middle of the day, you know, you got Iowa trying to lock up the Big Ten West, Georgia, Tennessee, of course, Minnesota could do something crazy, but I mean, Minnesota hasn't been doing too good. Oregon, Arizona State, of course, we know a couple years ago, Arizona State, the rise of Jay Daniels at Arizona State a couple years ago was how Oregon got knocked out of the college football playoff race in a game between Oregon and Arizona State. And then, you know, late in the evening, of course, Washington, Oregon State, and then Texas trying to lock themselves into the Big 12 championship against Iowa State. And, again, a crowded Big 12 race. Iowa State has the opportunity to shake things up even further. Um, There's all sorts of tiebreaker scenarios involved and everything like that. If Texas were to lose this game against Iowa State, uh, you know, the, the, again, you have Kansas State, you have Oklahoma State, Iowa State, and Oklahoma all in this race at this point. There could be a chance where, you know, maybe a three-loss team in conference play could get in, but it's highly unlikely. So this is it. This is it. If Texas were to win this game, they'd be one step closer. I don't think they would be able to lock up a slot just yet, but they'd be very, very close to locking up a slot in the Big 12 championship. In me, in the meantime, Oregon State still has the potential to go to the Pac-12 championship. Same thing with Arizona, Utah, especially for Arizona. Utah is kind of out of the race at the moment, but Arizona has the opportunity. And, you know, Jonathan Smith and the Beebs have, you know, they've been doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, there's been a couple of weird losses in there. You know, the Arizona game, of course, the Washington State game, in which they look uninspired. But this is your chance to make a statement against Michael Penix and the Huskies. So, and, you know, the Huskies haven't been playing the greatest defense lately. Their offense is still looking pretty good. but Their defense is vulnerable. So the Beebs have their work cut out for them. Can they do the thing? and beat Washington, Georgia. Um, you know, again, they're playing Tennessee. They just got, you know, this Tennessee team just got smacked around by Missouri. Georgia could do the same thing to Tennessee. And then Louisville trying to lock up a slot in the ACC championship. They have to beat Miami, though, who's been, you know, kind of plucky, kind of an underdog-type team this year. Um, there's a chance that Virginia Tech can get in, but it's looking more to more likely that North Carolina – would be the other team. It's either Louisville or North Carolina at this point for the ACC championship. Um, Virginia Tech, it would have it would have to be you know some crazy nonsense for them to get to it. Um, again, Michigan, Ohio State, Oregon, they all have different kind of tests that they cannot afford to lose. Maryland is probably the toughest of the three. Um, I know Arizona State played Washington's tough, but you know. It's probably Maryland that is the toughest of these three games for these three teams that are CFP contenders as well. Um, James Addison, they don't they don't get a bowl game. I'm sorry, the NCAA said no, nah, we're not doing that. Uh, but yeah, they get the host game day. That that's that's good, right? Right. Um, you know, again, that crowded Big 12 race, once again, Kansas, Kansas State, that can influence how conference championship weekend can go. And again, Iowa, all they have to do is either beat Illinois or beat Nebraska, but they want to probably beat Illinois this week and lock up a Big 10 championship game berth to take on either Michigan or Ohio State in the AAC. 
while they are the conference that looks the most likely to get the group of five rep for the New Year's Six, with SMU Memphis being the most important game as far as trying to figure out the tiebreakers and stuff for the AAC, because there's three other defeated teams in the AAC. Teams like Toledo, who is 10 and 1 at this point, because again, this was recorded. This is a Wednesday that I'm talking, and Toledo just played last night, and they won their 10th game in a row. And Liberty is still unbeaten. So those two other teams have a shot, but the AAC is the clear leader right now. So we will find out everything as we get into week numero 12. I don't know why it says week 11 right there, but it's week 12. So there y'all go. That's going to do it for me. I'm going to get on out of here, skedaddle, and, you know, get ready to talk the NFL real quick. So enjoy this, and I'll see you in about, I don't know, I'll, I'll try and, you know, space out the premieres and everything like that. So we'll get this up, then we'll get the NFL stuff up. So, yeah. <laughs>